Necessity is the mother of invention. And I totally believe that. Many of the things that I have created have been out of necessity, and that's the case now. I'm building a rhino sculpture for a local library here in the Phoenix area, and I needed probably several hundred little panels to go on the rhino as skin. Well, I wanted it to be textured, and I did start out using a ball ping hammer, actually pounding each little panel. I tell you, after a couple of dozen, the arm wants to fall off the body. I had to come up with another way, and so I created the custom die to create a texture that I could use for the Rhino sculpture. I'm using a six by six by half steel plate and a two by two by quarter inch square tube that's four inches long and an inch and a half by quarter flat bar that's seven inches long. One of the first things you wanna do before you weld is make sure that you put a nice bevel on any material that you're going to be welding. In this case, I'm putting the bevel on the square tubing. Once the bevel is in the tube, I'm gonna take the square plate and I'm gonna redraw some lines that I had drawn before that go corner to corner. And what this does is this helps me find center of the plate. Once I have the center of the plate, then I can actually take the tubing that I prepped and place that on the lines. Lining up the corners with the line puts the tube roughly in the center of the plate. Now, once I have that centered on the plate, I'm gonna go ahead and put some tack welds on the tube and the plate to make sure that it stays in place. Even though this is half inch steel, if you don't tack it down properly, there is a good chance that the half inch steel could warp. We're doing two inch welds along the base of that tube and on that flat plate. So there's gonna be a lot of heat. Once I have all the tack welds in place, I go ahead and start the two inch welds, connecting the square tube to the plate. There's gonna be a lot of downward force on this die, and so I wanna make sure that it is nice and welded. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up any little bobbles that jump off of there, and I'll go ahead and get the flat bar actually welded to the top of the tube. Now again, I'm going ahead and put some tack welds right there where the flat bar connects to the tube. And I had two fairly heavy spaces that I need to fill with weld. As you can see, the gap between the inch and a half bar and the square tube. Now I can guarantee these welds are not gonna win any competitions, but it is strong and it is secure and I'm not worried that it's gonna go anywhere. Yeah, look at that. That is just pretty stuff right there. You know the term laying dimes. Well, I just throw a handful of coins all over that. So once I get that welded, and probably just more to make myself feel better, I take the grinder and kind of clean that up just a little bit, make sure I've got a nice flat surface because that's going to then mount to the actual press itself. And I totally thought I was recording, but I didn't. Uh, but this is how I actually made the texture on the bottom of the flat plate was basically take my MIG wire and put little dot welds right on the flat plate, just like that. Now I'd already pre-drilled the holes and I'm sorry I didn't have that on any type of uh, video footage, but obviously this hole that I am working myself into the flat bar now has been threaded. And there's another hole that you saw in the flat bar that is actually behind that tube. Now. It, half inch bolt goes up into the machine and gets threaded into that area. So it connects with two bolts. Once I have this secured and nicely tight, now I've got to figure out how much space I need between the die and the bed, which is the metal plate that I just put that wood on top of. I think the travel distance on this particular press is about three or four inches. So I want to make sure that I put that sheet steel up there close enough to do this. Yeah, I was pretty pleased with how this came out. Now, here's the deal. Is it really looking like rhino skin? Nah, maybe not, but you know what? I'll stake artistic freedom on this. And once it's all put together, I think that just having the texture and the representation 
will actually do what I need it to do. And for me personally, this really now opens up a whole new world of things that I can do with this press. And this is the Rhino that those pieces are going on top of. I don't see why you couldn't take the exact same design that I just did for that die and put it to a 20 ton hydraulic, you know, car jack uh, pump. It has very similar pressure and you should be able to make dies for that as well. I'm just fortunate that I have enough space in the shop and I came across this uh, 25 ton die. Uh, it's coming very handy in the shop. So as you can see, I've got a wireframe here uh, that I had first created and now I'm adding these little plates to kind of create the skin. And I need to do hundreds more and this is the reason for the die and I didn't want to tear my arm up using a ball peen hammer. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. It is greatly appreciated. As you can see, I still have a little ways to go on the Rhino and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get back to work on that. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.